Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today I'll be using the AMD Radeon HD 5450s in Crossfire, but I'll be using the 2GB models to see if the extra VRAM capacity helps, because I haven't found any videos with this specific setup yet, probably for good reason. I'll be bringing out the maximum performance that the HD 5450s have to offer, the maximum overclock and the maximum VRAM capacity. The well-known HD 5450 has been covered many times before, and it's known to be a terrible card for gaming, but hopefully I'll put this topic to rest after bringing it up again. Also, please see the timestamps in the description below to see the contents and specific parts of the video. This 10 year old card was never intended for gaming. Although this one looks like it's advertised as such, it was made as a low power display adapter and came with many OEM PCs. The low power means the cards can be passively cooled and so are silent. The main thing about these cards however is that they support DirectX 11. So most applications and games will run on these cards, even if they run at single digit FPS, and a bit glitchy, as you'll soon find out. So we owned a HD5450 from 2014. It was a 1GB model and a VTX brand, but I thought it was a 2GB model at the time. So I picked up another 2GB card over a year ago, which was a Sapphire model, hoping to use Crossfire. It even stated Crossfire X support on the packaging as well. And Crossfire did work, but performance wasn't great, but I really wanted to find out how well two cards performed with 2GB VRAM each. I found a 2GB card on eBay. It was an Asus one, but I found out it was a rebranded 6450 and Crossfire didn't work, so I resold it. So after searching on eBay recently, I came across another 2GB Sapphire model. So now I had two of the same model, the only difference being the memory chips on the back. So I installed the cards. I installed the drivers, but then enabling Crossfire resulted in a black screen. I had to remove the drivers and start again. I tested the newest card on its own, although the PC detects it's there and the PC knows it's in there, it would not display an output. I tried the three different video connectors but none of them worked. The card heatsink was getting rather warm as well. I tried disconnecting the VGA connector and it fixed the issue. Success, it must have been a bad cable. So I reinstalled the drivers and Crossfire worked. Success. I originally had 6 games to try out, Doom 2016, CSGO, Crisis, Apex Legends, GTA 5 and Just Cause 2. 3 games had profiles, 
The rest had crossfire compatible mode enabled. Although there's a crossfire profile for CSGO, I couldn't get it to use it. Doom 2016 had to use OpenGL as the cards don't support the Vulcan API. But performance was so bad, crossfire or not, that I didn't include this game. So for the overclock, I used MSI Afterburner, it allowed me to increase the core to 700 MHz from 650 and the memory to 870 MHz from 667. AMD Overdrive allowed me to increase the memory by an extra 30 MHz to 900 MHz. So games, Just Cause 2 was a good result. Testing at 1080p low settings with high textures. The extra VRAM was insignificant. I tested the FPS while making the character jump, while panning the camera and a short gameplay clip. Crossfire enabled versus disabled. The extra performance was very noticeable while playing, a lot smoother performance and responsiveness, making the game go from not playable to just bearable at 1080p. I just don't think I could play the game all the way through at 1080p with these two cards. So dropping the resolution to 720p gave a great experience, almost 60fps. It didn't quite look like 60fps, but it felt as responsive as 60fps, maybe due to the nature of Crossfire. Apex Legends next, it had AFR compatible mode on, I was surprised at the result. Crossfire enabled increased the FPS and responsiveness of the game noticeably, making the game somewhat playable. It was quite glitchy with artifacting though, and a new, a new driver may have fixed this, but we're never going to get that new driver. The on screen display was also glitchy, but both cards were at high utilisation. There will be crossfire enabled versus disabled too. AFR friendly mode fixed the glitches mostly but 
but both cards are only utilised around 50%, so I may as well have just used one card, it would have got the same performance. But an interesting point, the cards used all 2GB VRAM, and that's what I wanted to see. These cards were in, were in a game with all VRAM utilised. The 1GB cards would have had the game stuttering a lot. Can it run Crisis? Surprisingly yes. It ran at 1080p, though not playable, but as there is a crossfire profile for this game, performance was optimal. Both cards at the max utilisation. It used around 1GB VRAM average, but at the point where more than 1GB was used, the game was unplayable. The cards didn't have enough power to utilise 2GB VRAM for this game. The 720p medium settings was a sweet spot. It was playable. It was a 30fps console like experience, which was surprisingly great for these cards. Playing at 720p high settings wasn't ideal, less so at very high settings. GTA 5, running lower settings near 60 FPS required 800 by 600 resolution. It ran great with Crossfire. All VRAM was used up, no stutters, smooth as Crossfire can get with these cards. At 1080p, no stutters, just a slow response and low FPS. But it was quite a disaster. Seven twenty P was a sweet spot. I could play like this all day. Again, a console like experience. Crossfire enabled versus disabled will be shown.
So Heaven Benchmark next. I have a side by side comparison between Crossfire Enabled and Disabled. As this is a synthetic benchmark, you can more easily see the differences as the same scenes are shown for the two comparisons. It's running at lowest settings, 720p first and 1080p afterwards. I'm only showing the first six scenes for each resolution, or this video would drag on even longer than it already is, but I'll show the results at the end anyway. So the conclusion, so there you go, crossfire with the HD5450 2GB models with the max overclock. Sadly, even with the max OCM VRAM, these cars just don't have the power or driver support to game properly, bottleneck by memory bandwidth and core power. Even older games run slow, but these cars were never intended for gaming. However, crossfire plus the overclock made some games go from unplayable to playable at the high resolutions. It improved the responsiveness of the games quite noticeably. Two of the games used all of the VRAM. There were no pauses or noticeable stuttering in gameplay with any game, which is all I wanted to see really. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you like my content. Also, please check out my GTX 480s live video if you would like to. It's a lot more powerful than this setup. Follow me on Twitter for updates, although they may seem far and few between. I'll see you all in the next video. I might even make a video with three way crossfire if it works. It didn't. I stopped wasting time with these stupid cards.